think that it's a particularly interesting topic for citizenship to look at technology. Firstly, because I suppose it's advancing so quickly um, in recent decades and because it's become such a part of all of our everyday lives. On the one hand, we know that technology can enable and empower people to participate more in society and also that it can exclude people and isolate people. So this is why it's particularly interesting to look at how people with disabilities are using technology and how it can enhance their, their citizenship experience. We're looking at two things really, universal design or access for all, so products that are designed, technology that's designed to be usable to the greatest number of individuals and then we're also looking at assistive technology um, which would be devices and technology that's specifically designed for use by people with disabilities. Ideally if everything was universally designed in theory there should be no need for assistive technology but the reality is that people use things in different ways and certain people will have different or requirements um, or different preferences for how they like to use technology. Um, it may not be because of disability, maybe for other reasons. One of the opportunities we have in this work package will be to look at both um, and how they can develop in tandem without one overcoming the other or not acknowledging the need for the other. There hasn't been much consideration of the overlap between disability and ageing in, in terms of use of technology and that's something I think we can explore um, very nicely in this project, especially things like um, technology that enables people to live independently or to remain in their homes for longer, um, smart environments and ambient assisted living technology. What are the regulatory forces, the social forces and the market forces that have had an impact on how people with disabilities use technology? And we're also going to be doing a series of life course interviews with three different generations of people with disabilities across a whole range of disabilities to really understand how people use technology and the ways in which it has changed. I'm really excited about the life course interviews. Um, it's going to be quite challenging but I think this is one of the really unique features of DISIT and if we get this right uh, I think this could be really exciting we would have a, a really unique um, stream of data that we could use. It, it has the potential to, to give some really, really good information on the impact that all of these policy developments that we talk about in the abstract actually have on people's lives. But also, we must have an active dialogue with technology developers because we have to recognise that policy isn't the only reason why people change what they do. It's more often social and, and market forces, consumer demand or financial incentives um, that might actually drive people to, to work differently. So we need to understand those factors as well as the policy developments to know what needs to change and to be able to provide good recommendations. Yeah. These are the kinds of things that technology developers should be thinking about when they're thinking about developing um, both specific products for people with disabilities and, and products that would be designed for use by, by a greater number of people. That's something we're going to have to explore. What are the, you know, who do the technology developers see as their consumers and how are they responding to the trends and the, the needs and the desires of the consumers? There, there are all sorts of applications that we may not have even thought about and that's one of the interesting and exciting possibilities of this project that we may be able to figure those out and see how they could be developed further. And technology as I said has such an impact on so many areas of our lives. Um, it can be an enabler, it can be an isolator, so we need to be able to understand that um, when we go off developing policies and law reform projects in other areas that affect people with disabilities because we need to come up with good practices and good examples and innovation uh, and we also need to be wary of the risks um, involved and, and need to understand what challenges face us as we continue to develop the work. People with disabilities as you know consumers of technology have a lot to tell us about what works and what doesn't um, and, and also um, in sort of the policy making sphere what, what strategies work, what policy makers are convinced by and so on. So the disabled people's organizations that work in that field like for example the European Disability Forum which is part of this project probably have a lot to learn from them in terms of um, how we can go about implementing the recommendations that we come up with in the research. Mostly with people with intellectual and psychosocial disabilities we may have a very different take or very different use of technology um, and how we can learn from them about what we should be focusing on because it may not be what, what we as academic researchers think is important. So not only that we would influence maybe and shape the content of the legislation but that we could be to the forefront and that our findings could actually steer the implementation of the act. I think that would be really excellent.